a couple levels here. Uh, if you didn't know, we're playing Earth Defense Force 2025 for the PlayStation 3. It's also available on Xbox 360 and soon to be the PlayStation 4, which promises to fix uh, frame rate and loading and have like 50% more content overall. So uh, I've been kind of going through it, trying to get um, there's some levels I just cannot do on Inferno. I've got some that I've been here on Inferno. You can see uh, in the corner there. It says Wing Diver and it has those five boxes. So there are 85 levels. And there are five difficulties. And in this level you can see I've beaten all five. Uh, excuse me. In this level I've only beaten two. In this level I've only beaten one of the difficulties. There are four classes. So you do the math. There are 85 levels. There are five difficulty levels. And then there are... Uh, and then there are uh, four classes. So I think there's something like 1,700 levels, technically. So to 100% this game is actually, like, fucking impossible. It's crazy. Ooh, I like this one. Select a difficulty. I forget what weapons I have the right now. The Let's just jump into easy. Uh, I've been playing this game and getting new weapons and stuff. I forget what loadout I had recently. So... Oh, I got people in the chat. I got more people in here. And again, I said this before, I, I always really appreciate it when I do this shit, like, you know, last minute, uh, really unprofessional, uh, but people still come out. Uh, and I hope, I was hoping that this would come out, uh, this, this stream in particular would be a little uh, easier going because I wanted to have, I thought Earth Defense Fridays would be, is, is a really good thing. It's a really good show. And I like the idea of like TGIF, TGIEDF, and just like, hey, every Friday night after work, Play some, play some Earth Defense Force, shoot some bugs. Uh, but I think, yeah, down the road, uh, I'll have to get myself, like, a a real-ass a, a PC. Just also, I need a PC because there's more games available. Uh, but also, I could have one specifically for streaming. I wouldn't even really want a PC rig that played, like, newer games really, really well. It's just so many games on Steam that I wish I could play because I'm Mac only. Uh, I just can't. Oh, yes, I love it. That gun's amazing. Oh, this is the... This rocket launcher is insane. It shoots, like, instantly. And it's just... Look at that frame rate. <laughs> so that is not your streaming software that is not your stream ladies and gentlemen that is really how awful this game looks but then you get this shit and you go Ugh! and just it's just, just it's just great it's just great oh I'm playing on easy too that's right so these bugs are probably not not any kind of difficulty at all but still this game is incredible I mean, basically, I, if you know me, if you've seen the videos I've made on the other two EDF games, uh, you know, this game is not perfect, and I, I, I don't need it to be. No one needs this game to be perfect. You know, if you, if you really are a fan of these games, you know what you're getting into. And you can just accept it for... Let it be, let it be itself, man. EDF is beautiful. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in here. Let's get out. Some, some new dead bugs. And I, I love how the flying feels. Um, I think the whole panty shots thing <laughs> with this character is kind of annoying, but I really love the way she flies. Um, I love how she doesn't wear pants even though she flies around. Like, girl, it's gotta get cold. Give her some long pants. What's wrong with this? We won't let you above ground. The one thing I don't like about. I guess or rather the other thing I don't really like about the wing divers is uh, they get health really slowly. It's about I don't think that anyone knows exactly how the breakdown is, but for every like maybe five to ten uh, armor tokens you get, it actually goes to one extra HP uh, as opposed to most other classes. So I think it's just like yeah, for every one you get, you get one more. So there's some levels where, like, you get struck by spider webs, 
and your wing diver just goes down. Just, you go from full health to nothing because you just have so little defense and so little armor. But this game's got online, it's got the class system and stuff like that. Whoops. Got a little there. So really, you get the sense that some of these later levels, uh, you know, like, like EDF 2017, it, to play them by yourself is almost impossible. You have to get other people. The game just kind of has... It, 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 the game has balance issues in that some levels are just so kind of fucking ridiculously hard. But it doesn't have big swings, like... The, 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 uh, when the game is hard, it's really hard, but when it's easy, it's really easy. And there's lots of in-between with it, so uh, it doesn't come across as too sloppy. But really, pound for pound, it's just th these games ain't for everyone. Uh, but I fucking, fucking love them. It's really relaxing. Uh, it, it's it, because the game can be really hard. And there's, it's worth playing on the harder difficulties because you get more weapons and there's a, this game has even more crazy weapons than uh, uh, the previous ones. And so finding a new weapon is like, ooh, I can't fucking wait to try it out. But also, you sometimes you just want to fucking play this game on easy. Just fucking relax and shoot some bugs. You know, turn the turn the audio down. The audio in this game is great, but, you know, turn the audio down. Not a, not a podcast or a, a mix cast or something. Just like, it's, it's a... It really is a fun, just relaxing, great... You know, video games are fucking dumb, you know? There are some games out there that, you know, endeavor to tell stories and, and make, like, you know, social commentary or tell interesting layered stories with characters. And There's room in this world for that. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, sometimes I need to be... I need, I, need, I need to fly around with big guns to shoot up bugs. Or spiders. Normally these guys would be harder. I love the idea that this gun is so... Like, the spread on it is so kind of ridiculous. That I'm not even, like, aiming. I just kind of gesture to one side. Like, it's like just... Like a, a flick of the wrist. Just... Huh? Oh. You're dead now. It's <laughs> just... Oh, that's good shit. It's good shit! Your games are fun. Let's have fun. We're here to have fun. Uh, I, uh, I brought up the online multiplayer a lot. I've never actually played it online. Uh, so I think maybe down the line it would be cool to get some... Uh, some Stop Skeletons fans together and actually make a... Make a multiplayer night of it. I'm not at all paying attention to the chat right now. I'm so sorry. So I hope. Uh, is everything looking and sounding fine? Are the levels all good? Now yeah, build a rig that runs games for 400 bucks. That's nah, that's definitely. Hey man, that's a cut. That's. It's a video on Patreon. So yeah, I got level one, level zero weapons. I got I got nothing there because I was playing on easy. But I got armor. See all that armor, and I got what was it four maybe? I think it was seven oh nine. I'm at seven thirteen. So yeah, the the, the grind is kind of slow with uh, wing divers. All right, let's do this on hard. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, Eric from Let's Get. I got I got to holler at that dude because uh, he and I have talked about getting together for uh, a proper review of this game. Cause like shit, man, it's the only other dude that I know who was like actually who was like already down with EDF before I met him. <laughs> uh, I got some uh, folks back in Alaska into EDF. But it was mainly like um, they liked playing it with me, and I introduced them to it and. Uh, but he was already he was already down with EDF independently, uh, so it was really great to uh, get to, to make that friendship just a little further. Okay, so way up high, and we just boom, death from above. Just. Those holes stay open. They will come and go as they please. 
Is the game audio loud enough? I do want y'all to be able to hear uh, some of this stuff here. Oh, Bullet Witch. I remember... I want to say... A friend of mine bought Bullet Witch for like three bucks because I heard it was sort of alright. And, and we bought it because I, I showed him 2017, EDF 2017. And we kind of got the idea that those games were kind of similar. But I recall we played it for about... 10 minutes and just didn't we didn't play it long enough it didn't leave a good impression on us but I remember like kind of being like yeah I want to play that game again he's like oh I, I sold it so I yeah I never I would, I would be interested in going back to Bullet Witch I like the name Bullet Witch audio is fine Audio's great. Okay, cool. Alright, good. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, there's like a recycled PC uh, uh, store around the corner here from my house. About like three or four blocks away. Uh, and I walk by every once in a while and think, I should just go in there and be like, hey, what's the... Give me something really fucking cheap. Destroy the tunnel exit, you giant insects. We will let you above ground. You giant insects. There is a part later in this game where, like, what can be laughingly called the story uh, kind of hits its peak. And the radio transmissions are like, the, you know, Europe or whatever, the last EDF base just fell. And, and the girls, the woman is like, like the last, the, the 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 last EDF base has fallen to the insects. Where, where are all that's left? I don't want to die. And it's this moment where the game has been really silly, and you know this audio stuff is hilarious and corny. But there was something about her delivery on that I don't want to die. Like sent chills down my spine, and it's like holy shit, EDF. Y'all just got real. <laughs> Didn't expect to be emotionally affected by an Earth Defense Force game, but like, for a, for, a, for a quick minute there, you really got me feeling something. So even on hard, these pushes aren't. But I got it completed on hard, and then we can try it on hardest. And if it's still too easy on hardest, you know what to do. You know what we do. Inferno. I gotta reload this. This gun is too fucking good. It reloads quickly, it doesn't take a lot of energy, it lasts a really long time. It doesn't have a lot of range. Uh, and I, I think you kind of want your wing diver to have some range, but I'm just more of a, you know. This is how I do. I just fucking can't come in. Let God sort him out, you know? Just dump. Oh, but see, my health is going down hella fast right now. Look at that dude's behind me. Oh, no! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Oh, the classic. I died because I blew myself up. <laughs> That's how it always goes. Giant insects are appearing one after another in the urban areas. It seems as though they're burrowing a tunnel to them from the nests. There are too many! So they were making roads safely underground? A large number of holes were found in urban areas. It seems like these are exits from the tunnels that lead to the nests. Just like if those holes stay open, they will come and go as they please. We have to destroy the tunnel exits. Destroy the tunnel exit. Got it. Not a problem. More tunnel exits. Search for them. It looks like there are underground tunnels for the giant insects. We found the exit to the ground. Hurry and destroy it. Ah! 
collecting items is still kind of a drag. That's it's still a bummer that uh, you know I, this is a, a huge improvement over 2017, uh, and of, of course it is a huge improvement over Insect Armageddon. This really is the EDF. This is the EDF sequel that you know you would want coming off of uh, 2017 with Chiki Boy Goon 3. Still a little irritating that there are things like, you know, collecting items like this. There aren't, isn't like some kind of experience system or, you know, a uh, cool like, you know, uh, I don't know, achievement system or something more more modern. But I think collecting items as the wing diver is, uh, you know, is it's nice and easy so you can get around quickly. The giant insects made an exit somewhere else. And I recall playing this game and being like, yeah, it's still a ton of fun. This is fucking amazing. I wish they could fix the goddamn frame rate. Uh, I, I recall putting numerous hours into Gears of War 3 Horde mode. I fucking love me some Gears of War 3 Horde mode. I'm sure some of you already know that I have a passion for that. I love it. Uh, and in, in the many hours I played Gears of War 3 Horde mode, I don't recall ever seeing slowdown. I don't think ever. And shit can get fucking crazy in that game. And so I play a game like this, and I'm like, God, I've seen what insane third-person shooter chaos can be when you don't have slowdown. Now, it's not, of course, fair to compare those two games. Uh, you know, this is, you know, th th these are not epic games. You know, this is not epic games with the same tech and the same people. So that's not really a fair comparison, but it did kind of make me wonder, like, God, one day will we ever get an EDF game with a solid frame rate? And apparently that EDF 4.1 on PS4 is uh, not a solid 60. I guess it, it kind of wavers between 60 and 30. It's still not maybe the absolute perfect EDF game, but... Uh, yeah, that PS4 version apparently might, might be that game that fucking I always wanted. You know, let's have some fun. Can I, can I blow this up? I'm not... You're gonna feed me well. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, I can. How you folks doing in the chat? You know what? I know what you came here for. I know what you came here for. I'm gonna see some big fucking buildings fall down. Look at that big building fall down. What? That's kind of impressive, you know? That was certainly better than how it looked in uh, 2017. Okay, what am I supposed to be doing here? Okay, yeah. Fucking <sighs> so good, so good. I love. It. So it's such a great game. And this game about it is about a year old now, a year and a half old. If you really wanted to get yourself a copy of this on PS3, I mean, shit, we're talking like a couple of bucks, 20 bucks tops after shipping on Amazon. But that PS4 version. Uh, coming to America, that was actually an E3 announcement. And of course, no one else was talking about it. Uh, <laughs> definitely not a whole lot of love for EDF in America, so I don't blame them. But uh, they said EDF 4.1 comes to PS4 fall. They haven't given a release date yet. There is a date listed on Amazon. I actually reached out to XSeed, the people that are going to be bringing out the PS4 version of this game, on Twitter, and I was like, hey, so th th this game, as well as another PSP game, uh, PSP version of EDF2 is coming out as well. Have dates listed on Amazon. Is there still an official date? And I was told by that person on Twitter, like, no, they're still just listing it as the fall. So EDF 4.1 is coming to America in a couple of months, but no release date um, as, of, as of right now. But I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that game. It's been out in Japan for a while, and I've watched some videos of uh, the PS4 version. And yeah, that game looks like it runs pretty fucking great. You know, it's, again, not that perfect 60, which, you know, it'd be great to be able to play EDF on a solid 60 frames. But I watched some crazy videos on YouTube about, you know, Japanese uh, uh, streamer. And shit looked pretty good to me. I was pretty happy with it. Ooh, I got a what? I don't like the grenades. I got a new grenade. I don't care about grenades.
What's going on in the chat? I'm 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 ignoring all you fine people. Is screen tearing usually this bad? I I don't know. I I'm not watching how it looks on the stream, but yo, this game doesn't you don't play for the graphics. It, it might actually be just the game. Spider-Man 2 on GameCube. I haven't played it on I played it on PS2. And I, I recall it being a pretty fun open world game. I haven't played it in a really long time though. Oh yeah, trying to stream on YouTube. I haven't even tried that. Doesn't require as much resources on Twitch. Might be worth looking them. Am I gonna get EDF on the go? I don't have a Vita yet. Never really had much of a need to get a Vita. It, the only thing that the games that I would buy with a Vita are like games that I already own. It'd be really cool to play Spelunky on the run. Are on the go rather, um, and uh, you know stuff like that. And also because I have a PSN Plus membership, I uh, I have so many games already. So if I got a um, let's try it on hardest. Let's try it on hardest. If I got a Vita, I would already have a ton of games to play on it. But um. It would be cool to play EDF2. I, I played EDF2 on emulation. A friend of mine has a, a modded um, hard drive for his PS2, and we played that briefly, uh, the European version of EDF2. And yo, that frame rate was real bad. Real bad, like even worse. Uh, but it seemed like it was a fine, fine game. So again, if like EDF on the go, if they can lock your frame rate down, I'm absolutely in. Okay, hardest. Let's see if we can do this. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, you know, I'm, I, I think there is a little extra screen tearing on the uh, screen. Can I try, try to compare this here? There's a little extra tearing, yeah. So far, hardest is not that hard. Mostly because I'm just so good. We found the exit to the ground. Hurry and destroy it. Okay, I get a reload here. Super voice. Is that Kata Karaoke? Oh, Karaoke! It's karaoke super voice. <laughs> ah. This game is missing like cheats. Like Goldmine style, just fuck with the game cheats. Cause like playing this game with invincibility and unlimited wing energy so I could just like dump my uh, crazy strong rocket launcher would be a lot of fun. That's an aspect of video games I kinda miss. Where like just insane cheats that kind of break the game. They, they kind of went away after the uh, N64 days, but like Turok and Gold and I both had, you know, cheats that were just like, I don't you know, big head mode and disco mode. Like you could do unlimited ammo and all the guns on Gold and it's like you're somehow wielding two tanks or something like that, you know, the tank gun is, you, you have the tank gun now and you're shooting it, like weird shit like that. Okay, so I think on hardest you're dealing with these ants, not a problem. We will see how uh, dealing with the spiders the next wave after that. That's, that's probably going to be tough. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. Whoa! Well, there's her ass, but we'll circle around.
I'm not sure what caught me. Damn. You know what? Let's do a different mission. Because I know y'all didn't want to just see me say uh, the damn, same damn mission. <laughs> Wait, I, I hate my fans because Starship Amazing is over? <laughs> not quite. Oops. Deploying. Select a mission. Yeah, let's do this, uh... Select a difficulty. Do this thing. Big walking thing. Yeah, Spooky, why why you why you hating right now? Why are you grumping? Starship Amazing had to had to go, man. That's how it is. And Calvin's still making music too, so like, shoot. I'm making videos, he's making music. And those those records are still out there. You can still you can still listen to them. And we put out a lot of stuff. Now I'm proud of the stuff he put out. It's too huge. Yeah. We can't get it with only ground troops. <laughs> Destroy it with air raids. Stay sharp while you're dead. Stay alert. We will fight with you. So that thing is not on my radar. And I think that's because in, in this this level, you don't destroy it. So actually, I need to not worry about this guy. Yes, sir. Oh, another one came out. Oh, no. Ragdoll. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Yep, got him. Reload. Oh, Jesus. What even hit me? This is oh, that was the foot coming down. Okay. The attack aircraft Midnight is headed this way. It's going to deliver a blow with a new penetrating bullet, Grindbuster. Stop the quadruped <laughs> until midnight arrives. The Grindbuster. Let's get some of this action with uh... two, three, four, five. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, missed him. We're gonna fire. <laughs> also, how they fall apart now, they... I guess that one didn't happen, but sometimes they actually explode into chunks. It's, it's funny how this game talks about eight years ago. It's been eight years. What happened eight years ago? It's been eight long years. Like, totally ignoring that Instant Armageddon never happened. Like, Instant Armageddon was definitely, like, not as good as 27, or, uh, yeah, 2017. Um, but they don't gotta, like, be so kind of passive-aggressive mean girl about it. Talking about taking their girls out to dinner. 
We stay focused, guys. Can I beat the level? Boy, right. <laughs> oh my God. Clean up all enemies besides the quadruped fortress. Not a problem. O -o already did it. <laughs> Fucking foot. Oh my God! I took all of them out except for like three. Oh, that was great. All this armor, baby. not be able to see. Sometimes you can shoot the guns on its chassis, but you can't Destroy shoot and hurt the, the actual uh, tank things. In your face! All three lasers! Oh shit! Ah, that foot! That's the most lethal thing in this level so far, is the foot. Any shot, stay classy, Japan. Oh, shit. This is kind of annoying when you get hit, you're just like floating around. Gotta wait till you land. here for a while. There we go. There's nothing grind buster can't penetrate. Tattoo that on my forehead. We'll grow more fingers so I can make nut tats out of out of, as, as, that's worse to live by. Oh, nah, I fucked up. Nah, I fucked up. Yeah, there we go. Hope you're hearing all this chatter from the other EDF soldiers. You know what's great about these games? You can go in here and just turn sound effects off. And so you go in here and it's just chatter. You just you just want to hear First response on the sensor. the enemy. Destroy the flying drones. A juicy steak. Leave it to me. And you can just play like this if you want. If I go, take care of my family. We're winners. I'll think about what? it. Midnight has acquired the target. Okay, all right. No strength. <laughs> 
I don't know of any other game that does that. Like, why would you have that in your game? Like, what do you gain from doing that? Okay. Oh, I missed a chance to knock out all the flying dudes. Did you go to that one place? Riveting dialogue. Brian Buster. Defeated target. I feel like uh Brian Buster would be like a cop. You know, we all out here in that grind. Holy's trying to put you away. Busting the grind. We also still have armored forces stashed away. There is a dispatch request to the Air Force. The battle on the ground is beginning. Grindbuster, that's a good name for chumps. I'm out here just doing my thing, and Trump's trying to trying to bust my grind. Alright, what's going on? How you doing, chat? <laughs> Derek looks like he's having so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> All that armor. And I probably got three more things out of it. 725. Okay, it's not it's not so bad. So what's going on in the chat? Grand Busters with the Megas. So Mega Man uses, yep. <laughs> 2025 is a snooty mean girl at the lunch table sitting across the Instagram Armageddon. Kind of reminds me of Serious Sam. Yeah, no, Serious Sam's great. Oh, you're opening a donut shop called Olympic Donuts. Little backstory on why that song was called Olympic Donuts. Uh, there, there's a, a, on Matt and Kim's first record, there's a secret track at the end where they're just like recording some kind of promo. I don't really know, but like Matt's trying to do this like thing like, hey, we're Matt and Kim, come and see us play. And he keeps kind of laughing and stuff. And then uh, he's at one point, like, he giggles like, we're going to go get donuts with Kim and Matt, Matt and Kim at Olympic Donuts. And uh, that song in particular on Scoops of Robot, I always felt like that was me trying to rip off a Matt and Kim style melody. Uh, I don't know if anybody else can can hear that similarity, but when I hear that song, I'm like, oh fuck, I was really trying to rip off like these three or four Matt and Kim songs. And so we felt like calling it Olympic Donuts was a Matt and Kim reference, uh, and because that was a very much inspiration for that song. So I, I presumably somewhere in Brooklyn, which is where Matt and Kim are from, uh, there is a an Olympic Donuts already. Oh. Do I like the grime buster? Cause I am a buster. Sounds like something a chump would say. Sounds like a sounds like a question for some some chump. Sounds like chump shit. I ain't got no time for chumps. Ah, uh, let's see. I like games that revel in their own absurdity. This and Time Splitters being a good example. Fuck yeah, man! Time Splitters is. 
oh, a time capsule, if you will excuse the wordplay. But those games are really silly and fun, but they're just of a time. I, I know, again, no pun intended, uh, there's like a, a fan project to bring back Time Splitters, and I think there's like a, a, a Time Splitters Rewind, which is a, a, a online multiplayer focused one, which is great. But I've always really, really enjoyed the single player in Time Crisis. Or, sorry, Time Splitters. Um, I enjoy the single player in Time Crisis as well, but Time Splitters, uh, you can't. I don't know how you make that game. If you would, if you were to make a fourth Time Splitters game, like what is that in in 2015? You know. Because you have Serious Sam, or you have, like, just zombie mode or horde mode, and you have Splatoon, which is also kind of crazy and fast and ridiculous, but, like, the idea that that game was just kind of a ridiculous, fun, run-and-gun shooter, I don't know that that's really that special anymore. And so, to me, you know, if they made it into the Time Splitters, which is, like, so fucking unlikely, but if they did, I'd be okay with it. But I don't know that that, that game should come back, because what would, he, what would it even be? So, I, I kind of look at the Time Splitters trilogy and think, all three of these games are fucking great. That's not so bad. Would have been cool if we had gotten a fourth one, but we might never. And I guess I'm okay with that. Because we did get some... Those games hold up remarkably well. Even the first Time Splitters, I think, holds up remarkably well. Excellent fucking game. <laughs> New I ICP movie, Big Money Busters. Oh man, big money rustless. That's a that's a film. That's a feature blank motion picture, all right. Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a new Gex game coming. Yeah. Who the who the fuck asked or cares about that? But apparently, yes, there is a new Gex game. All right, we keep it going. Select a mission. Ooh, this one's got. Oh, this is the one with like the weird dragon things. All right, let's try this one because Select it's all about those. Uh, Trying higher difficulty. Let's try the hardest. Just doing the robots. Give you guys a little bit of variation going on here. The idea that I would one day finish even just the Wing Diver campaign, e even if I got all the way through just on hardest, like that shit would take like a hundred hours maybe. Like it would it would take a couple of years. There's, there's so much game here that it's almost, like, kind of bad in a way because, like, who the fuck is going to play this game for that long? As much as I love this game, there, there isn't much to it. It's a really simple game. You make 85 levels. That's a, that's a lot. Confirm bombardment hectors. So in a way, it's like this game never ends, really. They have plasma guns in their arms. But then again, again there's uh, the, the possibility of actually getting together with some uh, Stop Skeletons fans and making a multiplayer thing out of this would be really, really rad. Weapon. I want that weapon. Alright. Forgot this is on hardest, so this might Whoa! This might actually be a challenge. All three lasers. Having all three lasers is stronger than the, uh, maybe stronger than the rocket launcher. Okay. I don't think I can get in the water without her starting to swim. So I think I actually gotta back off. I think if you get in the water, then she starts swimming, and you can't jump to fly until you get to, to land. That's kind of a bummer, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yep. There we go. There it is. Cool. Pay dirt. Oh, that's all you got for me? Yep, 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 yep. Fuck chump robots. The armored unit fighting the Hector is lost. The Vigalta M2s are all destroyed. Impossible. It seems the cause is the new walking machines dropped by the enemy. Command headquarters is now analyzing the data. You don't want to kill him while he's in the water. Because then you drop his yes, items in the water and you can't uh, can't get him. Is it really just these last two? There's more to this mission than th just this. It can't be it. What should I take out next? Check the right. Understood. Is he gonna get that, that thing gonna get out of the water? Or is it gonna oh yeah, hit the wall and then walk back. Alright. Alright, fuck off, man. You gonna come up out of the water? Yes, come up out the water. Internet memes. Cause I'm glistening. There we go. Here we go. Bam. Okay, yeah, that's another wave. Okay. Snuck a guy over here like I wasn't gonna notice. I need to reload. There we go. One armor. All right, two armors. Fine. I should have brought maybe a rocket or a, a sniper rifle with me instead of a rocket launcher. Cause these guys gonna be kind of tough to hit. They're all gonna be shooting at me. This is ah, uh, this is not good. This is not good. Whoop! Nice try, buddy. Gotta think real hard. Strategize. That's how you get to be a top tier EDF player like myself. See? In the water. Nope. No, nope, Get out of the water. Yeah, I got I gotta go back with a uh, sniper rifle. I'll get it this time. Now I don't know what I'm up against. Chumps in the water. It's cheap. It's hacks. Like if I was in the water, yeah, I'd beat that level too. Can equip two weapons. I wish that there was a comparison button too. That's also a bummer because there are so many stats here. There's not like a just, hey, compare, you know, style. Uh, you know, like something from Borderlands. Six barrels? High performance masterpiece. Nah, that's fine. You know, this costs less energy. It's got more of a zoom. Nah, I gotta go with this one. Okay. Alright, let's try it again. Choose a class. Ranger. That's not what I wanted to do. Deploying. Select a mission. Select a Artist. Why is it called the hardest difficulty level when there's one higher than it? 
because that's that's the logic that Earth Defense Force exists in. <laughs> that's EDF logic right there. Alright. Oh, you can zoom again? Okay, that's the zoom. I've always been a uh, rocket launcher kind of dude. Don't much use the snipers, but you got it sometimes. This is Strategic Command Headquarters. So. The Hectors are bombardiers. Long distance battles are dangerous. Close Pop. in. Three, four, five. There's an enemy over there. Let's go. Six. Not six. Still not seven. Seven. Oh Jesus. The sniper rifle might not be. Come on. So, eight or nine. Stay sharp with the dead. Stay alert. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Weapon. I landed on the tree. I landed on that tree somehow. Feels good. Feels right. Feels nice. It's great. It's a great game. It's a great game. There it is. There it is. Oh, spinning around. The armored fucked up. The Hector's lost. The Vigalta M2s are all destroyed. Impossible. It seems the cause is the new walking machines dropped by the enemy. Command headquarters is now analyzing the data. All items right down here. Oh, y'all can't even really see my. I just realized you can't see my radar at all. And you know what? I bet I could just tilt this so I'm over here. And then. There. That's fine. Still see me? And now you get the whole screen. Okay. Now you can see my radar. Now you see the whole game. You get the whole thing. I want, to, I want to make sure my audience gets the fullest Earth Defense Force experience they can. If I'm not giving my audience 100% EDF, then I don't even know why I get up in the morning. Like, what's, the, what's even the point? Oh! Time to scratch my face. Time for itchy faces. Got chump robots. All health. That's all health. I don't want that. That's more health. I might need that. Later. And right now, I got this chump look at. Oops. Thought I had switched weapons. It's gonna hurt. Holy shit. Oh man, now I really need that health. I guess when he was pointing both his barrels of his gun at me, I shouldn't have just flown 
as close as I possibly could into them. Pop. Pop. There we go. What did he drop? Armor, health, no weapons. Oh, one weapon, sweet. <sighs> that really takes a lot of energy, though. And she's such a slow walker. Like walking. Fucking drag. I want to fly. Oh, whoop. Nope, that's not good. All right. Oh, God, don't hit me. Woo. Oh, yeah. That was close. Oh, no. Oh, no. This isn't good. This isn't good. Let me let me fly. Can I fly away? I Lenny Kravitz that shit. Whew. This is going to be a close one, gang. All right. So long as this dude is distracted. Somehow miss. There we go. Hopefully, he draws some health. Or guns. I like guns too. I'll take new guns. But I still am in that one hit death range. This is gonna be close. Uh, all the items all on the ocean floor. That doesn't help me. Yep, yep. You want to get on land? You want to get on land? What's even happening? Yeah, okay, I did it somehow. Yeah, I'm fine. We have information regarding the new walking machine. It seems it can deploy a shield screen somehow. We have not confirmed the intel. But it appears oh. that they can carry a shield screen generator. What? My my EDF buddies took out the rest? Not totally fucking useless? Not a problem. Sweating over nothing. I just had to believe in myself. So it is the machine's purpose to protect other weapons. A terrifying strategy. This enemy will now be called the Shield Bearer. <laughs> the Shield Bearer. And now, suicide. <laughs> ah, no new weapons. Level two, level three weapons. What? Well, I think this has been an hour. Any last questions here for the uh, handful of people in the chat? <laughs> that sniper kind of sucks, yeah. And I think it's my strongest sniper. <laughs> yeah, I was able to to switch shit up. I'm a, I'm a pro now. Oh yeah, so as, as mentioned earlier, 
Uh, and as, as Wing Blazer here pointed out, this game has an absurd amount of content. Uh, here's the crazy thing is uh, EDF 4.1 that's coming to PS4 promises 50% more content. So, like, new vehicles, new weapons, more levels. Which, like, guys, yo, fellas, just fix the frame rate. <laughs> Get the frame rate good. That's all I need. Don't worry about extra levels and shit. That's fine. You've got enough levels here. Have I played Metal Slug games? Metal Slug games are fine. I, I, I don't I don't like arcade games that uh, you would realistically need like twenty, thirty dollars worth of quarters to beat. You know, when you, when you look at some of the old arcade games, they were the original like mic microtransaction shit. You know. So, uh, some of the Metal Slug games are fucking crazy hard. And the amount of practice you would need to, you know, to realistically beat that game, let's say you walk into an arcade, and they got Metal Slug 7 or whatever, and it's like, well, I got a dollar worth of quarters, I want to get reasonably far in this game. So, I think the Metal Slug games got more and more kind of fucking crazy as they went on. So... Uh, I kind of, they're, they're fun and they're great, but like most games you play like on MAME, you know, uh, you're like, you just hit the, 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 the button for more quarters and you get like 99 credits and then you just kind of go through the game and it's kind of, it's, it's, this is mindless. I remember my camera is, this is mindless and crazy, but at least like I'm building towards something. Every level that I, uh, I do, I'm unlocking more armor. I'm maybe getting more guns or at least I'm, I'm, you know, that's another, uh, level off the bucket list so there's some kind of progression there but when you have crazy arcade games like those metal slug games there's just no there's no incentive for me to play them because it's like beating them it's just like flashing lights and crazy sound effects and then it's just there's no there's no like kind of reward to it and there's no uh real payoff so that's kind of how i feel about metal slug and most arcade games just in general uh how come I'm so awesome? I'm just trying to do me, man. Just gotta be yourself. Gotta love yourself. And hopefully you'll you'll be awesome. Hopefully, if, if being yourself is, you know, not putting other people down. If you doing you is, is you know, not being a jerk or a chump to other people, like, then you're probably good to go. Just gotta find that. Just gotta, it's, it's all right here, man. It's all right here. Any games I'm looking forward to other than more EDF? Dark Souls 3. I've played through Bloodborne recently, and I fucking love that. And uh, I did not like Dark Souls 2, but I really liked Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Uh, and I know that uh, uh, Miyazaki was not in a directorial role in, in Dark Souls 2, and that seems to be the reason why Dark Souls 2 wasn't very good. Uh, so I'm really hoping Dark Souls 3 is uh, something great. Off the top of my head, though, that's about all I'm looking forward to. But I, uh, let's see, what was at E3? Cool stuff at E3. Man, I'm, I'm always bad at these types of questions, but that's that's all I can really answer right now. I'm sure there's more. Oh shit, Bloodstained and Mighty Number no. Nine. I, Mighty Number no. Nine's coming out in man, September, right? So at two months out, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, also, the Mega Man Legacy Collection. I don't know. I. I it's it's easy to be really cynical at Capcom and they fucking deserve a lot of cynicism and negativity but you know that Mega Man Legacy Collection with uh, all like the special bonus rooms and stuff like I don't know man that could be kind of cool but I think it's only coming to Xbox One and PS4 not PS3 so I won't be able to play it or I guess like is it coming to 3DS but I don't want to I want to play it on 3DS I got Shovel Knight on 3DS and I regret getting it there uh, I wouldn't be able to play it elsewhere. Or if they had some kind of cross buy, that would be cool. But I don't have a Wii U either, so. Doom. Man. Doom. Like, I talked about this with Time Splitters also. Like, I think Doom's going to be cool, but, like, you know, a crazy run and gun shooter, which is what Doom needs to be, Doom 4 needs to be. I just don't know that that's really something that's missing in this world anymore. So, 
like I'm sure Doom will be awesome. And if it's really, really, really good, then I'll like yeah happily uh, try and play it. Um, again, I don't have any of the newer systems right now. I don't have I have as of this moment have no way to play it. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like to make another Doom, it was a business decision. They were like, we have to have another Doom. I guess it's kind of cool that they did have a Doom 4, and they just said, no, scrap it, start from scratch. So maybe they have some good ideas with how this new Doom needs to be. But, I mean, this is this new Doom. It, it, it needs to be like old Doom. And that's always a tricky thing. To, to one, do well, and another to make me too excited. Um, but I don't, I certainly don't like mind the idea that there's a Doom 4 coming out, so. Uh, but it looked like it was par for the course. It looked like it was what Doom had been before. So I watched that trailer and went like, yeah, that'll probably be fine. It really didn't light a fire in my ass. E even though I consider Doom to be like probably my top five, one of my top five favorite games. And maybe, especially like the first few episodes of, of Doom 1, probably the game I played the absolute most. I, I, I've, I've probably played like it's not my favorite game of all time it's definitely up there but it's the game that I've probably spent the most number of hours of my life playing is, is the first Doom especially those first two uh, episodes Shenmue I, I, I mentioned this on Twitter uh, but I still don't quite know how I feel about Shenmue 3 it's been a really long time since I've played through in fact I've never actually beaten Shenmue all the way um, I reviewed Shenmue kind of reviewed Shenmue I made a video about Shenmue uh, like five years ago now four years ago a while ago and the way that video came about here I'll switch this uh, I need I think let's do a kind of a, a Q&A thing right now so we'll shout out hang out here with uh, Mr. Skeleton um I didn't play through Shenmue for that review, for that video. It, that was sort of the uh, uh, the idea behind it was like, oh, if I just did the history of Shenmue, I wouldn't have to worry about playing through this this and the other game, which are both very long games. And I was like, I don't have time to play through two 40, 50 hour games. Uh, so I was like, I'll, I can just talk about the history and that in itself is enough of a video. So I played a little bit of Shenmue 1 to get some gameplay footage for that video. And in playing like three, four hours of it, I wasn't 100% convinced that it was really, truly a good game. It was definitely an interesting, idiosyncratic game and one of its time. But I think, at least how I approach reviewing retro video games is like, you gotta, you gotta take nostalgia off. You gotta stop being nostalgic for things. You can't let memories like that and let emotion kind of get in the way of, of how you review things. And so I, I have to look at a, a game like Shenmue and really look at it and be like, yeah, this game was great for the Dreamcast. And it was like kind of a, for an open world game. It was it was absolutely incredible and, and trailblazing. But you get down to brass tacks. I wasn't quite convinced yet that that game was any was really good or really held up. I thought it was amazing for the time. And then playing it, you know, uh, like 10 years after the fact at that point, I wasn't sure that it was still something that was really that great. And so, the fact that they're now kickstarting another one and they're going to make a third Shenmue game in 27, it's going to come out in 2017. I just got, I can't ask, I can't help but ask myself, like, what the fuck is that game really going to be in 2017? Is it going to be exactly like Shenmue was back in 2000 and 2002? And is that game honestly good or is it just kind of quaint and interesting? Uh, so I really need to play through Shenmue again, and um, you know my Dreamcast stuff is all in storage right now, so I can't very well do that. Uh, so I really don't know what, how I feel about Shenmue at the moment. It'll be interesting. Uh, I don't certainly don't begrudge the people, the, the fans who are, you know, probably ecstatic and just so relieved that that series is going to finally have at least a march closer to some kind of conclusion. But. I kind of look at myself and go like, yeah, I don't know how I really feel about that. And I don't, and I worry that people don't know what they're getting into. Cause I, I, there is a sense of, I really don't like people that think about old games and are like, yeah, the game was great. 
yeah, it was back. It was great back in elementary school or college or when the last time you played it. It was great then, but if you played it now, like, yo, the reality is some games don't fucking hold up. And to realize this thing you're nostalgic for, this thing you have fuzzy memories of, like, you know, that that rude awakening, that rough realization, I kind of wonder, like, man, it's like 69,000 people gave six million dollars of that game, and there's just no way that all of those people play that played Shemu in this decade, in the last decade. So I just worry that like a lot of people are buying into this idea of reality, or rather uh, re buying into nostalgia and not understanding that perhaps the reality might be different. Uh, which is ups which is maybe could we be a huge bummer. Again, I don't begrudge the people. I just kind of worry like, God, do they know what they're getting themselves into? Shemu might not have ever really been that good. I don't know, but again, I, it's because I need to play it. Um, and, I, and I have the ability to play it right now. So. No Wii U? No. I, 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 I kind of, I, I definitely, there's definitely uh, some games. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. I definitely would like to get a Wii U. I think there is definitely reasons I would like to get all three systems. Um, and a Wii U and PS4 and a Vita are kind of at the top of the list. Maybe one day an Xbox One. That's probably um, my, my, my lowest. Uh, the lowest on my list. But no, nah, man. When it came to the, all the new uh, consoles and shit, you know, I was... I had, to, I, I had to buy this computer here, this new laptop. I really needed to replace my old stuff. Um, so I instead bought this laptop, and then after that, I got serious about moving here to Seattle, and there was a good solid year, um, most of last year where I was like, nah, I gotta pay my bills, I gotta get everything set, and then put money aside for savings for, uh, Seattle here, so, uh, new consoles were just kind of off my radar. I did get a 3DS, um, and that was really the last new console that I got. So, yeah, that's just all way down the line. And even now, because I'm, uh, you know, trying to focus so much more on the video stuff, uh, if I got a lot of money to spend on something, I kind of want to spend it for the show or just for, like, bills and food, you know. So, r really, even, like, a PS4 and a Wii U are, are just really, really far off down the line. Oh, let me scroll down here. Oh shit, Mother 4, yeah. I don't think they had a... I think they had a release date and they were like... They were trying to push for last winter. And that fell through. Uh, which, you know, that happens. And fucking amazing that those people are doing it. Uh, so I, I would never give them shit for taking long. Um, they released a trailer for Mother 4 that looked incredible. It's just like... Holy shit. Looks like you looks. It looks like you are fucking doing it. it. It looks like these people, like when you hear about like oh some fans are making Mother Four, you're like, that could be good, you know. But then I watched that trailer that was just, it was a two or three minute thing, and it was like here's all the things you can do in Mother Four, and I kind of sat back and just went, did they fucking? It looks like they're fucking doing it. They're doing it. The Mother Four, it's the whole, yes, awesome, good for them. So I don't know when that's gonna come out. Uh, good for them for doing it, and I'm sure it'll be great when uh it does. Actually, I'm playing through uh Earthbound uh with uh, Grace right now. Um, she's been playing it, and I've been like watching her. And uh, what's great about that is we're playing it on emulation on my laptop here, and as she plays through Earthbound for the first time, um, and I haven't actually beaten Earthbound in a really long time. I've beaten it, I think twice, maybe three times in my lifetime, but I haven't actually beaten it. It may about 10 years or so because for the review, I didn't want to show spoilers and stuff. So I only ever played about to four side, to three, to past three maybe. And then that was really all the footage I needed. Uh, but for uh, emulation here, I'm putting save states so that uh, when I ever get around to re-reviewing Earthbound, um, I again won't need to play it all the way through. I can just load up a save state at a specific part of the game. Uh, but she's really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying watching her discover this game for the first time. Uh, 
she said something about Earthbound that, that really got me right here. She said, I wish I had played this game, you know, when everyone else did, when it came out, you know. Uh, she's younger than I, I am, so when it came out, she was probably not, like, really of that age. But she understands why a lot of people really fucking love Earthbound. Because a lot of us played Earthbound when we were, you know, uh, in our teen years or younger. And to play it, if you played that game in the 90s, there really was nothing else like it. And it really, if you, the, the game, the people who that game speaks to, it speaks so loudly and so deeply to. And so I think maybe that game was weird and quirky and strange. And maybe that weirdness and that quirkiness isn't so unique and special anymore. But it certainly was for the time. So it's great that it, it's, it's to watch somebody play through it for the first time and her to go, I, I get why people are so crazy for this game. Because uh, to be young and to play that game for the first time truly something special anyway earthbound sorry i can go on about earthbound uh oh ukulele yeah i don't know i don't know how i feel about ukulele that's another example of like you know 3d platform collectathons they went away like maybe for a good reason you know like Mario 64 is an excellent game. I would argue that for a handful of reasons, Banjo-Kazooie is the better game. But really, those two were the best, like, collect-a-thon platformers. And even at the time, I thought Banjo-Tooie was kind of lame. I thought that Donkey Kong 64 was an amazing start. And then I got to, like, the fourth or fifth level, and it was just like, this is too big there are too many fucking things to collect and I really wasn't interested and I think a lot of people just weren't interested in platforming collectathons and so I look at ukulele and it's like you're doing the same thing is that smart uh maybe it'll be fine though so I'm I'm I'm, I'm more looking forward to um bloodstained uh, it's a bloodstained and mighty number nine, uh, because I feel like those are known quantities. Those are also like yes, they're just they're the hey he basically made another Symphony Knight. They're basically making another Mega Man, but I feel like those types of games still hold up and, st and still are fun and relevant. Uh, so, but also it's a crazy time we live in that like yeah we're getting Banjo three E, you know, and, we're, and we are getting Shenmue three. That is kind of crazy. So uh, that's just kind of me having my res reservations. But again, I, I don't begrudge the people who are super looking forward to it. Um, so that that's... I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just doing me, if that means anything. Uh, let's see. If they did something like Super Mario Galaxy, like with missions or whatever, and just... Yeah, just, just collect junk wouldn't work. I never played the Mario Galaxy games. I own both of them, but just, uh, yeah, I never, never got around to playing them. Maybe because I was just still kind of sick of platformers. Uh, I, I know, but those aren't even really the same thing. To compare Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie to the Mario Galaxy games, it's not even on the same, uh, uh page. So maybe that's incorrect. But that, I guess that's why I never felt like I needed to play them. Uh, but that's kind of on my bucket list, my pi my pile of shame. Uh, th Mario 3D Land on 3DS. Uh, that game is fucking incredible. That's probably the best 3D uh, uh, platforming game I've ever played, and, and probably the best 3D Mario game I've played. Even though I haven't played a lot of them, but I fucking love that game. That game was super good. Earthbound is just as creative as Chrono Trigger. I've never been crazy about Chrono Trigger, and I feel like I've said this in other places before, but that game, I know a lot of people love it, but it just loses steam for me. I think that game has, I think, I think Chrono Trigger has probably the, like, one of the best opening, like, five hours of an RPG. You know, you go back in time, and then the princess is there, and then, like, she zaps from resistance because... 
you know, she was kidnapped and like that whole thing. And then you got to save the actual princess and you go back in, into the present and you go to trial and then you go to the future and everything's terrible. Like that, that whole sequence, which is takes up the first like, you know, five to seven, eight hours or so is, is fucking phenomenal. And then it, to me, the game just loses steam after that. And I just, I, I've played through Chrono Trigger, or try to play through Chrono Trigger so many times, and I basically get to the end of time, and I just lose all motivation to play that game. It just falls off completely for me. Uh, and I, I, I kind of go like, God, maybe this game just isn't for me, because everybody goes gaga for it. And I'm just like, yeah, maybe I'm just not, maybe I just don't get Chrono Trigger. But, uh, you know, Earthbound and Final Fantasy VI, you know. Kingdom Hearts 3. I got no dog in that race. Grace is really looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> Us Castlevania and Mega Man fans, at least have gotten some love since then. Yeah. I will say, you know, I am looking forward to Bloodstained. But there's a part of me that does also go like, oh, so Ega is making another Metroidvania game? Like, it's a pretty safe move for him. Uh, it, it would have been nice if he made a, uh, a vintage, kind of traditional Castlevania game. Uh, but, I, you know, that's... That's a small little, like, if for me. Or, or rather, a, a small but for me. Uh, and then, like, there's a classic mode that got unlocked. Uh, uh, that got, uh, it was a stretch goal. It was like, there's the, the bloodstained, classic, bloodstained classic mode. And I don't know what, I don't think anyone knows exactly what that is. But it would be really cool if they made bloodstained. And it was Symphony of the Night style, Metroidvania, open, you know, non-linear. Uh, which is fine, because he definitely knows how to make those games. He's proven that he's... You know, made uh, many of those that were just fine. Uh, some that were actually excellent. But if it was like a, a secret mode that was like classic vintage Vania, Castlevania 1 style, even with like 8 bit graphics and stuff, that'd be pretty fucking rad. That'd be the best of both worlds. Can't complain about that. Castlevania 4 for life. Yeah, 4 is great. 4 is a great game. I really like 4. Man, Mario RPG. I like that game a lot, but um, I've never actually beaten it. Uh, I never owned it, and it was one of those games that I always wanted to hopefully stumble upon for cheap, and I never did. So I never ended up owning it. That was one of the few kind of white whales for my Super Nintendo collection. So it just happened that I never actually have beaten it, but I, I borrowed it and rented it numerous times. And I've gotten at least, like, to the point where Bowser is in my my party past the woods where you get the uh, uh the puppet so I, I i've definitely played some uh mario 60 suits uh, or mario rpg rather um pardon me if i'm losing my voice here uh i'm running out of water and uh it's getting harder and harder to talk yeah rondo's good rondo's really good i i've just recently had to play some rondo of blood and capture it for an upcoming video uh, that'll hopefully come out on Wednesday. Oh, that's the plan, at least. But for me, I think... Man, Dracula's Curse. I think that's probably my favorite vintage Castlevania game. Uh, 4 is really good, but, you know... It is kind of easy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Because, like, even like Castlevania 3 is a brutally difficult game. Extremely difficult game. So much so that I don't know that I've ever actually beaten Castlevania 3. I've definitely gotten the Dracula on my own. Uh, I forget which path I would normally take, but um, I don't think I've actually ever beaten Dracula, or, uh, yeah, Dracula in uh, Castlevania 3. Because when you die, it's all the way back to the fucking beginning, which is kind of insane. But, yeah, that game's hella good. And so I never played Rondo much. Least favorite RPG? Man. 
I used to like a lot of RPGs, and then I fell out of them when I got like into high school and college because I, as as I got older, RPGs kept getting longer and longer, and I had to stop playing them. But I don't. I, I'm not big enough into RPGs to to have a a, uh, a least favorite. I had a friend who owned Unlimited Saga for the PS2, and that game is laughably like terrible. It is mind-bogglingly strange it's such a fucking weird game that you wonder it's it's one of those what were they thinking and were they really thinking at all <laughs> but we only played it for a few minutes I never did play Nino Kuni but I found it for cheap so I've got it in my on my stack uh, I fucking loved a um, uh, Dragon Quest 8 the PS2. That was an incredible game, and it's a, a, that's also a level five joint. Uh, the Gaia trilogy. Oh, is that like Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia and Terra Enigma? Um, and then actually, I, I found out yesterday that uh, Grandstream Saga for PlayStation One is sort of a fourth um, Gaia game. Um, I'm most familiar with Soul Blazer, and that's a fine game. Uh, Illusion of Gaia is pretty good, but I haven't played it much. I, I, I don't have a lot to say about those games, but what, what time I've spent with those first two, they were fine. Yeah, the original Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest are fucking rough. They're bad. It's not their... F okay, they're not bad. They're just old. Holy shit, those games are old. They don't hold up at all. Uh, but there's been re remakes and re-releases of Dragon, Dragon Quest 1 and Final Fantasy 1. And I would, I, would, uh, uh, I would say you should hunt those down if you really want to go back. There's even a couple of... Uh, there's even at least a video on YouTube about a certain Game Boy port. Uh, it's a pretty good video. You might want to check that out. You have to look, look it up on YouTube. Ooh, a quick question for the chat. This would be a great... Yeah, and I wonder what people would say. Uh, Max7171 asks, What game do you think can't be remade? Like, it can't be done again. You, you can't go back home. Like... Well, I guess if it can't be remade, there are stipulations like, is it just too of its time? Is it too much of its time? Or is it... Um, like that team is just gone and you couldn't make it again or it's too small of a fan base so the chances of it being remade are never going to happen like I would really like to see a remake of like fuck a re-release or remake of something of Ill Bleed because that is a fucking incredible horror game just a weird game, but just so good and so interesting. The shit that Illbleed does is like it's it's fucking balls. That game's just colossal balls. Like real talk, it, it, the last level of Illbleed, they just get rid of gameplay. There's really no gameplay in it, and they just do a weird parody of uh, of Toy Story. Just fucking cuz. And at the very end of it, you're essentially playing Woody and you're fighting Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog, because he's the evil guy. You're, pl you're, 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 you're fighting Zo Zo Dick the Hedgehog, I think they call it. Um, like it's, it, it, there's so much fucking weird shit that happens in that game. And then the final level is like, all right, take a break. There's the, you know, this is, there's like no actual challenge here. Just we're doing a Toy Story parody for some reason. We're like... Woody dies and gets sent to the electric chair, but then Buzz busts him out of jail or something like that. God, I got. I want to play that game again because I fucking forget how it all goes down. But shit, I would love to see a remake of uh, Ill Bleed, but I don't know if anyone cares. I don't know who even owns that IP anymore. I know that the creator of that game passed away, and so I think that's just. That could never be remade just because it's just unlucky. 
I would like to see a remake of Jumping Flash. That'd be really cool. But I don't know if anyone else would care about that. Uh, Chrono Trigger and System Shock could not be recaptured. Maybe, yeah. I feel like you couldn't recreate an early RTS like Warcraft 2. Yeah, I was watching this giant bomb video where they were playing um, Samurai Showdown 1 on Neo Geo. And they were going through the characters and all the special moves that the, the game had such, like, all the characters had so few moves. You could not make a fighting game today that was really this, that simple. Now, if you made a fighting game, it would have to be, you know, crazy deep and have combos and insane depth, special moves and weird parries and, like, all types of stuff like that. Um, because that's what, that's what you're up against now. You know, fighting games need to be complicated. Uh, and same with, like, RTS. You couldn't make Warcraft 2. You can go back and play Warcraft 2 again. I th I've actually done that. And it's it's really fun. It's really great because it, because it is so simple. But, you know, you can't remake those types of games that are just so simple and so small. Just, the, you know, people will, of course, measure them up against, you know, the big dogs. And it's... It'll, it'll push it into the major leagues when it's trying to play, like, you know, minor league. So, those genres kind of full stop. You can't... You, you couldn't remake those in a simpler way. Um, or if you did, it would have to be, like, some kind of iPhone game that was uh, had uh, like in-app in purchases and shit like that. What else are people saying, though? Oh, yeah, I would say full motion video, but her story proved me wrong. I need to play that. Actually, Grace played that on her phone the other day. She said it was really good. Derek, how could you get through Silent Hill 2? That's that's so scary. I don't know, man. True. Absolutely true. Scary game, but... Uh, I, 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 uh, it's like a roller coaster, you know? I, I, I put myself in that. I used to play those Silent Hill games. Lights off, sound up. You know, I played through all of Bloodborne recently. Lights off and my big fucking headphones on. And that game actually is pretty scary and unnerving, and you know it's it's that's a horror game through and through. Bloodborne. Um, not Silent Hill too. Like, if in real talk, like if you haven't gotten through Silent Hill, I'm gonna assume that you must have stopped at the apartment complex or the hospital, which means you did not get to the historical society of Silent Hill too, which the historical society. Which is kind of the third main area in that game, it is is fucking terrifying and scary and amazing. Like I, I think that game kind of peaks early because the historical society in Silent Hill 2 is 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 masterful. It's fucking incredible. because uh, it's just they do so many crazy shit. So much crazy shit happens in that area. That that that's if, if you want to talk about like a specific part of of just. If you want to talk about moments in, in horror games, and not even like horror games in general, but like that's like one of the best horror moments in any game is is, the, is that sequence, that entire sequence. <laughs> Taboo, that tarot card simulator for the Nintendo. I mean, you could remake that game and make it some shitty one dollar iPhone game. <laughs> What was the name of the fourth Gaia game? Grand Stream Saga. Not Grand Stream Saga. Grand Stream Saga. G-R-A-N-S-T-R-E-M-E-A-M. -E uh, it's a PS1 game, and I played it uh, just last night, and I don't know, man. It seems like it's kind of all right. It, it's kind of weird. It's an old-ass polygonal game, which are always rough, but yeah, I want to play that game more. I really fucking loved it back in the day, but I did never beat it, so... That might say something. That might mean something there, too. I would love to play Illbleed now, but it's so expensive. Yeah. I managed to get mine. I think I picked mine up for like 50, 60 bucks at a, at a local joint, uh, which was more than I normally spend on a game. But I was like, Illbleed. I knew Illbleed was a game I really fucking wanted to have. So it was one of those times where I, I was like, no, nope, I'm buying this. It's in good condition. It's kind of expensive, but no, nope, I'm buying this now. And, you know, 50, 60 bucks for that type of game uh, is cheaper than it would be on eBay. You could remake the original Tote Jam and Earl. 
And they're trying. That that new Toe Jam and Earl looks like they're they're trying to do uh they're trying to remake that. I think this is gonna do it though, folks. It's getting kinda late. I'm gonna head on out. But I really, really appreciate uh, you coming here, sticking with me. We'll have to revisit uh, trying to stream shit from my PlayStation 3. Maybe streaming like PlayStation 1 games will be uh, easier. Uh, and so I don't know if Earth Defense Friday will come back. I don't know. But again, uh, I hope to have more streaming stuff uh, to do on the regular. But we're still figuring that out. I have, I'm still also trying to get... Um, a good working schedule for getting videos out. Uh, July was definitely a month of we need to figure out a better production schedule for videos. Uh, this has not been a fruitful month in terms of getting videos out, but it's been fruitful for the production process. Um, I am on YouTube. Check out uh, youtube.com slash lowfatjello. That is where the Stop Skeletons YouTube account is. Uh, that is unfortunately uh, the URL that I'm stuck with. Uh, I still plan to open up a separate YouTube channel just for the streams. And uh, I'm on Patreon if anybody would, uh, if, if you're already supporting me, I thank you very much for supporting my Patreon. Uh, but if you'd like to support me, throw a couple bucks down on that, that'd be really great. Uh, that stops skeletons from fighting at Patreon. And I think that's gonna do. Oh, an, oh yeah, an ill bleed stream? I gotta pull that shit out of storage, but that's the type of shit that I would like to do on that's why having a separate stream channel would be interesting to me because I could do long plays and have like eight videos of all of, of, of a whole playthrough of a game and not feel like I'm uh, uh, kind of clogging up uh, my main channel because I think most of the people that subscribe that they want the reviews and I don't want to uh, uh, feel like I'm, I'm giving them the old bums rush and switcheroo on them so Keep Patreon updates on this multiplayer EDF. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It, stream or not, it would just be fun to have, like hook up with some 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 dudes and get some uh, live streaming. Or sorry, live, live streaming or not multiplayer EDF because I've never played multiplayer EDF. Uh, definitely, if there's three other people uh, who would like that. Uh, but that's gonna do it. Thanks again. See y'all real soon. Take care. Have a good night.